Hello, in this module we're going to look at how to get a good sound from your chanter when you're first learning to blow it. Many students start to blow their practice chanter and find that it doesn't seem to make good noises. There's many reasons why it may not make a good noise. But the other thing is, a lot of students don't quite know what a good noise is when they first start. So let's start by having a, a, a listen to what a good sound is. This is my practice chanter. I'm going to blow it on the lowest note that the practice chanter can produce, which is called low G. And what I'll do is I'll start to blow very softly and it'll sound a bit like a sick duck. When I increase my blowing pressure, it'll suddenly snap into a nice sound. And then when I finish, blow, when I blow harder again, it'll be too much and it'll stop. So remember those three bits, it'll sound a bit croaky and raspy. Then as I increase the pressure, it'll drop into a good sound and then it'll stop. So I'll do that again. I hope you heard it. A croaky sound, then a nice sound, and then it'll stop as I increase the pressure. So first it was croaky, and then it was quite reasonable. When you listen to the whole scale on the instrument, it sounds like this when it's uh, blown about right. So that's what a reasonable sound from a practice chanter should sound like. And so your job first up is to get it to the right pressure to give that sound. Now, many people when they start on the practice chanter suddenly find that it makes noises that they don't want. It squeaks or it can even stop. When it stops and you're still blowing, we call that a choke. So the chanter has choked. You can get squeaks and chokes and they come from various things. The first one, we've already seen a choke happening when we blow too hard. The chanter stops. It can happen if your fingers aren't properly covering the holes. Here's an example. I'm going to move this finger sideways so it's not covering the hole properly. As I moved it off, it actually choked the chanter. So if your fingers aren't covering the holes properly, the chanter will tell you by its sound. It can also happen if your reed is wet. You can usually tell because there'll be some other symptoms like it might sound a little bit bubbly. But it's another thing to check if your chanter is choking or squealing. It can happen because the reed is too weak. You can get different strengths of reeds and there is some manipulation you can do with them to make them softer or weaker. But in, generally in, a, in general, in a practice chanter, uh, you got what you got when you've bought the reed. You can do some things, but not a lot. So you may find that in fact, the reed is just too weak and you need to get another one. You may also find there's a blockage somewhere. You may have in the reed seat that we described in an earlier module, there might be some junk and you need to clear it out. I don't find that happens very often, but it's certainly worth a check if you're having problems with the reed squeaking or squealing, if you like, or choking. So that's how you want your chanter to sound and some of the things that can happen that stop you getting that sound. When you're blowing your practice chanter and later on when you're playing on the pipes, it's better not to puff your cheeks out like this. Over time, you can actually stretch your cheeks. Try and keep them controlled and contained. So that they're not puffed out. I like to uh, have the practice chanter in the middle of my lips. I sometimes see people playing out the side like this, often with their heads turned. Um, it's not a good practice. Everybody's different and some people might find that they never can get their, the middle of their lips to uh, hold well and so they blow from the side instead. If you need to do that, well, then do that, but it's not the optimal way. The other thing is don't bite it. There's no need to bite it. If you have uh, ever played a clarinet, you'll know that the bottom teeth are used in controlling the reed. It's not necessary on a practice chanter to try and control a reed that way. In fact, you can't. 
Also make sure that you understand the, the notes don't stop. On a set of bagpipes, the sound is continuous. There are no breaks between the notes. So on the practice chant, you won't have breaks between them either. If you're playing three notes in a row, they should sound like this. Not with breaks between them. On other wind instruments, there is a practice of tonguing the reed or tonguing the instrument to cause breaks like this. I did that with my tongue onto the tip of the chanter. That's not appropriate here either because on the bagpipes, you can't stop the sound. So you can't stop the sound here if you're learning to play bagpipes. The sounds must be continuous. Etc. Lastly, it takes a little while to build up stamina with your lips. Not a lot, but it does take a little while. So don't be frustrated if you can only play for five minutes when you first start. Play for five minutes, take a break and come back later. Don't put yourself under any stress. So let your lips build their own strength over time. The other thing is when you're blowing the chanter and playing something, um, take a breath when you need to. The longer you can play without taking a breath, the more music you create without it. And so you hear more at a time. But don't stress yourself, don't do anything unnatural. If you need to take a breath, take a breath and continue. So in this module, you've learned how to create a, the right sound, what the right sound is really like, some things that can cause your chanter not to work well, like overblowing or your finger positions not being right. You've heard not to blow your cheeks out if you possibly can avoid it. Put the chanter naturally in the middle of your lips. Don't tongue it or stop the sound between the notes. And lastly, that it takes a little bit of time to develop the strength to play for very long. I hope that's been helpful.